China's Atomic Energy Authority has announced that the country has nearly completed construction of a power plant with the world's most advanced nuclear reactor. And China is poised to revolutionize the nuclear energy landscape. The Asian giant wants to build the world's first thorium-based molten salt nuclear power station, a development that could reshape global energy production. China has built the world's first working thorium molten salt reactor, reviving a technology once abandoned by the world. This is more than a breakthrough. It's a new path for clean, safe, and reliable energy, arriving just as the global system shows its cracks. But with nuclear energy's troubled past, is it safe this time? Let's find out. China's thorium reactor did not come out of nowhere. Its story begins, surprisingly, not in Asia, but in the United States during the Cold War. In the 1960s, American scientists at Oak Ridge National Laboratory successfully built and ran a molten salt reactor. Molten salt reactors for the production of electrical power were studied at Oak Ridge National Laboratory from 1957 to 1960. The United States Atomic Energy Commission in 1960 authorized the laboratory to design, construct, and operate the molten salt reactor experiment also known as MSRE. It used liquid fuel and operated safely at high temperatures. At the time, the U.S. was exploring different paths for nuclear power. Uranium-fueled pressurized water reactors, gas-cooled reactors, and molten salt reactors using thorium. Among these, the thorium design was promising. It ran at atmospheric pressure couldn't melt down in the way uranium reactors could and produced far less long-lived radioactive waste. It was also nearly impossible to weaponize. But politics, not physics, decided the future. Uranium reactors were more useful to military goals. Their waste could be turned into plutonium for bombs. That made them more attractive to Cold War decision makers. By the early 1970s, funding for thorium research dried up the molten salt reactor was shut down. Its blueprints and data were archived. Years later, much of the research was declassified, but ignored. The world had moved on. China did not. In 2011, the Chinese government made a decision most countries were unwilling to make. It committed to re-engineering the molten salt reactor and exploring thorium as a national energy solution. It established the Thorium Molten Salt Reactor TMSR project under the Chinese Academy of Sciences, specifically at the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics. Over the next 13 years, China invested more than $400 million in dedicated research. This was not a short-term demonstration. It was a long-term national plan. What makes this achievement credible is not just the reactor itself, it is the way China approached the project, quietly, patiently, and methodically. No rushed announcements, no hype, just years of scientific work, metallurgy testing, molten salt chemistry, fuel cycle modeling, corrosion resistance trials, thermal system design, and radiation shielding research. And all of it was designed for operation in real-world conditions, not just in lab-controlled simulations. The reactor, located in Wuwei, Gansu province, began operation in June 2024. It is small in power output, 2 megawatts, but that's enough to supply electricity to around 2,000 households. And even that number doesn't tell the full story. This was never about scale first. It was about proving functionality and stability. The reactor runs using thorium dissolved in molten salt, which serves as both fuel and coolant. It operates at around 700 to 750 degrees Celsius and under normal atmospheric pressure, eliminating the risks of high-pressure explosion events that haunt traditional water-cooled reactors. Then, in October 2024, just four months after the initial activation, the reactor hit a second milestone. It was refueled without shutting down. That alone is a world first. Most reactors must be turned off, cooled, and partially disassembled to change their fuel. But molten salt reactors are different. 
They allow continuous feeding of thorium and removal of fission products. The system can run without pause. This isn't just more convenient. It's more stable, more efficient, and far cheaper over time. China didn't just bring back a forgotten technology. It advanced it further than anyone else ever has. And it didn't happen by chance. The country combined historical U.S. knowledge with its own R&D, material science, and advanced reactor modeling tools. This isn't imitation. It's innovation built on a foundation the world abandoned too early. That is what gives this project deep credibility. And it comes at a time when the world needs credible answers. China's energy demand continues to grow. But so does the urgency to cut coal. Thorium offers one possible answer. It is more abundant than uranium, easier to mine and available in countries like India, Brazil, Turkey, and China itself. And because thorium reactors don't produce plutonium, they're less of a nuclear security concern. So when China activated this system, it didn't just achieve a technical milestone. It opened a door the world had closed. It proved that with time, money, and engineering discipline, one of the safest and cleanest nuclear technologies on record can move from history books into real deployment. But technical success is only part of the equation. To understand the full weight of this moment, we have to ask, what does this mean for people, for energy users, and for countries that still rely on coal, diesel, or unstable power grids? Because the real power of this machine isn't just what it does, it's what it changes. When people hear about a nuclear breakthrough, they often assume it's a project built for government labs or defense departments. But this reactor isn't just for headlines. It matters because it directly responds to the problems real people are living through. Rising energy costs, toxic air, power outages, and the growing pressure of a planet in crisis. Today, 770 million people still live without electricity. Over 2 billion rely on dirty fuels like coal, kerosene, or wood to cook their meals and light their homes. The Global South, particularly in parts of Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, faces an impossible choice. Continue burning fossil fuels and poisoning their air, or wait decades for expensive, often unreliable renewable grids to catch up. Nuclear energy was once seen as the third path, but trust in it has collapsed. Chernobyl, Fukushima, and radioactive waste stories have left deep scars. Even clean energy activists hesitate to talk about nuclear solutions, fearing public backlash. That's why China's molten salt thorium reactor is not just a machine. It's a reset button. This system removes the very problems that made people fear nuclear power in the first place. There is no high-pressure steam, so there is no explosion risk. There are no giant water-cooling towers, so it can be built far from rivers or oceans. If the power supply fails, the system shuts itself down automatically. The molten salt freezes, stopping the nuclear chain reaction by physics alone. That means no operator error, no backup diesel generators, and no panic response teams. But even more important is what this means for air quality and health. Every year, air pollution from fossil fuels kills more than 7 million people worldwide most of them in low- and middle-income countries. In northern China alone, coal-burning power plants have contributed to a significant public health crisis. Respiratory illnesses, childhood asthma, and premature deaths are part of the hidden cost of cheap energy. Nuclear energy, especially thorium-based systems, offers a clean alternative without those costs. There are no carbon emissions, no sulfur dioxide, no nitrogen oxides, just reliable electricity with minimal waste. For many Chinese scientists who worked on the Gobi reactor, this was not just a research project. It was a solution to a problem they saw in their communities. One of the project's lead engineers, in an interview last year, said his motivation came from growing up near a coal plant that turned the sky permanently gray. His goal wasn't to win global attention, it was to stop that from happening to someone else's children, and there's more. Thorium reactors also carry geopolitical importance for energy independence. 
Traditional nuclear power relies on uranium, much of which must be enriched and processed through a small group of countries. That creates long, expensive supply chains and serious political dependence. Thorium, by contrast, is more widely distributed and less tightly controlled. Countries like India, Turkey, Brazil, and China all have domestic thorium deposits. That means this technology could help dozens of countries avoid energy poverty without relying on foreign fuel or unstable markets. It also helps regions vulnerable to climate disasters. Because molten salt reactors don't need water, they can operate during droughts or in deserts. This is crucial in a time when climate change is already shrinking river flows and heating coastlines. Thorium reactors can be built on barges, in dry lands or near remote villages, places where no traditional reactor could ever work. For island nations or inland countries with unstable grids, this flexibility could mean everything. Still, emotions are not enough. People deserve more than hope. They deserve evidence. So the next question is clear. Can this system scale up? Can it consistently deliver power, efficiency, and safety? And how does it work on a technical level? Now it's time to leave the personal and social sphere behind and look directly at the science. Because if the engineering doesn't hold up, none of these benefits will matter. The Chinese thorium molten salt reactor isn't a marketing concept. It's a real machine designed around the strict principles of nuclear physics, thermal engineering, and material science. And now, with its success in Wu Wei, Gansu province, the technology is finally on display for the world to study. Let's begin with the fuel itself. Thorium-232 is not fissile on its own. That means it cannot sustain a nuclear chain reaction the way uranium-235 or plutonium-239 can. Instead, thorium-232 is fertile. When it absorbs a neutron, it becomes thorium-233. Through a short decay process, thorium-233 transforms into uranium-233, which is fissile. This process allows a reactor to operate using thorium as the base while producing just enough U-233 to keep the reaction going. It's self-sustaining, but with limits, and that's what makes it safe. U-233 is the heart of the reaction. Once created inside the reactor, it is continuously burned in the same molten salt loop where it was formed. This closed cycle process reduces the need for frequent fuel reloading and limits the amount of unused fissile material at any one time. That reduces proliferation risks and improves fuel use efficiency dramatically compared to uranium fuel rods, which are often discarded after partial use. The system also produces minimal waste. Most fission products can be removed while still in liquid form. And because the reactor doesn't need to overbuild safety structures for high pressure or use complicated cooling systems, the overall plant design can be simpler, cheaper, and more modular. Unlike uranium and plutonium reactors, thorium systems produce very little waste that can be used for weapons. U-233 is fissile, but when bred in molten salt systems, it becomes contaminated with U-232, a highly radioactive isotope that emits strong gamma rays and makes handling extremely dangerous. That makes diversion or weaponization difficult and unattractive. In terms of volume, thorium reactors produce less than one-third the nuclear waste of a uranium reactor. And, more importantly, the radioactive half-life of the waste is shorter. Instead of needing storage for 10,000-plus years, most of the waste from a thorium reactor decays to safe levels within 300 to 500 years. That's still a serious responsibility, but it's manageable, especially with dry cask storage and geologic containment. Now that we've seen the technology, fuel cycle, safety logic, and waste systems up close, the remaining question is not whether this works. The question is what comes next. China has already announced plans to scale the Gansu prototype from 2 megawatts to 10 megawatts by 2030. 
that will demonstrate the system's ability to serve mid-size towns and industrial facilities. From there, modular designs could follow. Factory-built reactor packages, easily shipped, installed, and connected in remote areas. The same molten salt loop could also be adapted to burn different fuels, including uranium-233, or be hybridized with high-temperature chemical processing for green hydrogen. This opens a new energy category, one that is not tied to old models of centralized grids or massive state-run utilities. It's nuclear power designed to be flexible, scalable, and safe enough to build near cities or in remote areas. But perhaps the most important change is psychological. By turning on this reactor, China has reminded the world that energy breakthroughs are possible, that a clean nuclear option exists, that with enough time and commitment, even discarded ideas can be brought back to life and made stronger. This is no longer about theory. The molten salt is flowing. The thorium is working. And the next steps are no longer technical. They are political and moral. Will other countries follow? Will global institutions support it? Let us know in the comments section. Will the public accept it? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. China's projects, economy, and increasing power. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.